Okay, welcome to another edition of the OT with Markowski. My name is Lauren Plant, of course, joined as always by the Detroit News, Tom Markowski. All right, kind of a tough subject uh, this week as we begin, and a real unfortunate incident, and it seems to be happening uh, more and more. It's, it's, it's one of these nationwide problems, and that is hazing, and we had one right here in our backyard. Well, I think what happens, I think hazing has gone on for a long time, and maybe some of us think that that stuff is in the past, that old school, that doesn't take place now. Well, unfortunately, it is still taking place, and it happened at Wald Lake Western. And you wonder, too, how much it takes place in other schools that we don't hear about, or even further to other states where football is much more serious business in high school, such as Texas and in Florida and, and some of the southern states and perhaps even California. But, you know, just speaking of this incident and specifically, it sounds like the kids just kind of went on their own and for whatever reason um, picked on one freshman. and. But at a coach's house. You know, it, it's... You know, I'd heard that the coaches weren't around when this happened. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of conflicting reports sure. on what happened. And the coaches who got fired apparently did not inform the school district or the head coach, Mike Sadebski, of this. And that is why when they did find out that they were let go. So it, it's, you know, I find it hard to believe that, you know, a coach that would be in, know of this wouldn't, you know, an assistant coach in this incident and in any other case would not tell the head coach, hey, this went on, is, you know, should we condone this? Is 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 this right? What what should we do with the kids involved? You know, be upfront with what happened and not say, well, things are just going to go over and we'll just, you know, let things ride. And, and what bothers me in this more than anything is all the publications and news broadcasts recently, when I say recently, a year, year and a half, two years, of the bullying that's taken place in high schools and even in junior high, where it's so, it becomes so serious that kids 10, 12, 13, 14, 15 years old are taking their own life because of being almost ostracized like you're a bad person and we don't like you and why are you living type of thing mm -hmm. now granted that probably didn't take place in this situation but at the same time you have a person being humiliated and and with the social media being so big as it is now and getting bigger as we speak and having that put on YouTube and not only his classmates knowing about it and his teammates knowing about it but people all over whoever you know, went out to that social media, finding out and watching that on YouTube. It's really disturbing to me. Um, you, would, you know, we talk, uh, just talking when we began this, you would think that maybe as time goes on, we become smarter or more congenial to other people. Yeah, compassionate. Yes. And, and Ribbing is one thing. Yeah. Like, here these we, physical we, acts are... Yeah, I don't know how much this takes place in other sports, too. Does it take yeah. place in soccer? Right. Maybe it does. Right. You know, soccer is a serious business mm -hmm. to a lot of people, and, and, and it's a very intense sport. Um, and I'm getting back to the intensity that football creates. You, know, you would think, well, you just know football is different from other sports. You have to get yourself geared up a little bit differently than you do you know, for a tennis match or whatever sport that you may p participate in. But needless to say, you would hope the adults would... Um, at least supervise this a little bit more thoroughly than they did in this well, case. You know, in football, too, it's, uh, it always surprises me because the mantra from day one of the season is, okay, this is your family. We right. are family here. Right. Everything we do uh, reflects one another, and, and we have some just fantastic coaches out here that right. we know preach that message. And right. again, we're not saying this is going on everywhere, but right. when it does happen, it's always like, especially at this time of the season, you got a team that's having a tremendous year uh, that could go really far in the playoffs. Uh, you, you, really, you don't want a distraction like this, and all it does is divide. Right Now you're setting up sides between some guys who say, hey, it's not a big deal, and other guys that say, hey, you know, if that was me, I'd be humiliated. Right. And that, unfortunately, we don't put ourselves in the other person's shoes uh, often enough to see what your actions, what your ramifications of your actions might be. And I don't mean to take down what you're saying, but, you know, so a team's success at this point is almost second second story to this. The first story is, is, is how these young people evolve as persons in their high school and going into college. 
And that's you know, your teachers on the field, your teachers in the classroom, and you're all working together to bring our youth up and enlighten them and make them feel good about themselves so they can be, you know, members of society that you know, are productive and not only productive, they're the word you use, compassionate. And it really disturbs me. I mean, yeah. the heck with the 8 1 record, the heck with the playoffs. Let's talk about individuals here. Right. And my point really is the fact that, especially on the teams that I played in, we all cared for each other so much. We were all like brothers. Now, granted, mm -hmm. brothers get on each other, sure. but we would have never dreamed of doing something like this to one of our quote unquote brothers, well, our family. Well, sometimes, if something would happen with a kid in school, another sport, or something, sometimes it's one team ganging up on another kid, but this is something in house. Well, you know, you're talking about brothers, but you, you would get on your brother, so to speak, on your team to, ma to help them perform better. Right. Uh, I'm not happy with your performance. Right. Right. That type of yeah, thing. Yeah, we've even had fights. You know, uh -huh. we fought. That's okay. you know, I mean, that fights happens. Fights are fine. Absolutely. I mean, you know, that's it's an aggressive sport. I mean, if you're just using your fist and your whatever, and you're tackling somebody because you have a disagreement, well, right. you break that up, and you, right. and then you work that out as it is. I mean, yeah, there's well, nothing like there's nothing wrong with. I mean, the fight. bottom line is you just got to use your head. Yeah, use your head. Well, this never yeah, ends that well. That didn't happen. And in obviously, this case. that didn't happen. Okay. Well, another topic uh, on a lighter s subject, but. Uh, also one that uh, uh, definitely would pique a lot of people's interest is the possibility of seeding in yeah, the playoffs. You know, I'm, I've talked about this and written about this for a while, and I always thought, and I, you know, when I get some of my ideas, a lot of them, most of them come from other, you know, the coaches, coaches I right. deal with and what their concerns are. And for years, there's been a uh, concern that seeding by district is just as unfair. Now, you can go to the playoff pairings any year. It doesn't have to be this year or other years, whatever. Just take one out of a hat and you'll see some districts they'll have six and three six and three six and three six and three and then others um, you know I think it's in division four with Marine City and, and Croswell Lexington for example on the other bracket too I think it's Pontiac Notre Dame prep but there's like eight and ones and two nine and O's there's too much disparity there granted that might be two different regions but um, point being if you see them according to region it would be the top team out of the eight playing the bottom team um, number eight and then two seven and so on and so on instead of splitting them up into districts we have one through four one through four there's some concerns of that because you would have more theoretically more of a discrepancy in distances that you would travel if that's your argument, why is Fenton hosting Marquette that's 405 miles away? It basically exactly. shoots down any, any type of, of argument that you might have about it's too far and we can't do it this way. If you can't do it this way, then wh why isn't something else done in that Fenton Marquette situation? So, whatever. <laughs> you know, when I saw that, I said, you know, that's got to be the last straw on this camel's back. Now, there's some legitimacy here to some you know impetus to get the ball rolling in this direction talking to Tim Beckler earlier this week he said the coaches association is is getting more and more serious about you know making a, a point and making an emphasis to the MHSA and and perhaps making a proposal that let's do this seating now I'm not saying that there should be more games played where you have to travel 400 miles. That's not my point here. My point is that you would be more fair. Uh, for instance, Muskegon would get a home field advantage in the first round instead of going on the road. Now you say, well, that's just Muskegon. What well, happens to other schools too? And you want to take Muskegon. Muskegon's got a shot to win Division Two If they had a, a more of a, a chance to host a game, and if anybody's familiar with Muskegon, their home games, it's tough to beat them at home. Not to say it's tough, not tough yeah, to beat right. them when they're on the road. Sure. But the point is, you'd have it would be more fair for these teams to have you're rewarding these teams throughout the regular season to say, hey, here's a home field advantage. You earned it. Yes. So I think I think it's a good idea. And and the heck, you know, with the idea that it's too far to go. And if it is too far to go, hey, you know, there's there's games during the regular season I noticed. The teams, I think it was Edwardsburg played Cadillac, if that serves me well. They played at Rockford. They went halfway. Um, why not do that if, let's say there's a you know, 400 mile difference, for example. If there's a problem with some of these teams, hey, play at a neutral site if that's the case. Or in the Marquette situation, hey, they give them Saturday to play. So they, I'm sure they're on the really way right now. We're talking on Friday. I'm sure they're driving right now to stay overnight someplace before they play that game in Fenton. Right. It can be done. Right. And your point uh, also uh, is, is the fact that 
you're rewarding for the regular season. Right. So that eighth seed, if that's what it is, and they would be on the you, road anyway. You have a you should have a devil of a time trying to get out because right. you got in, and the team that earned it in first and right. went eight and one or went nine and zero oh, uh, has a. More of a chance. Yeah, hypothetically, you could have that number one seed playing a five seed out of that region, mm -hmm. and giving a break to that, let's say that eight seed that might might play the two or even the three seed. Right. So now it's actually a, it's it's almost a, too much an advantage for that eight seed because they're not playing the best right. team in that region. And it's always tough when you have a team that's say nine and zero, and you got to go against an eight and one team, and the winner of that gets a six and three team. Right. And the coaches are telling me this, and they said, Tom, we don't mind traveling a little further. You know, if I had that eight and one record, I want that three seed in the region mm -hmm. instead of just that two seed in my district or that three seed in my district. Now I got to play on the road. They, it, it, they just don't see the equity there, and they. they they're willing to, you know, make those longer trips. And I was talking to Jim Sparks over at Clawson. He's got to go play up at Alma. And he says, yeah, the tough thing is, you know, we got that hour's drive. Now, for the Upper Peninsula team, that's like nothing. That's like yeah. going to the store to buy a loaf of bread. Right. But I said, I said, well, Jim, that's better than the alternative of not getting on that bus and making that hour drive trip. So, yeah, No doubt about it. They don't it. mind driving an hour. No, it's That's all right. It. All right, well, let's wrap it up. Rip from the headlines. Uh, a, hazy, uh, a coach's incident that uh, took place in, in Tennessee. Tennessee. Yeah, it was on, uh, I, we, I caught a link. Uh, my boss sent it to me. I sent it to you, Lauren. We had a chance to see it. A coach resigned, a high school coach, um, was caught. Uh, one of his players in the locker room recorded his ranting and raving using a, a number of profanities. Um, it was bad. Yeah. There's no question. Uh, you you saw it. Um, but I, you know, I sent it to some coaches. I won't mention the coaches I, right. I sent it to, but I, right. I just asked for their opinions, and they haven't really emailed me back on it, and that's neither here nor there. But i got to believe what took place there takes place in other places. And the reason this hit the airwaves, as it were, or your computers in front of you, um, is because somebody happened to record it. One of the players on the team recorded it, and it got out there. Um, I'm sure this happens at a lot of places, and I'm a lot of, sure there's a lot of coaches who saw this might say, geez, I do that. Right. It's just, it's, it's an in-house thing. It's, it's, granted, nobody wants to use, throw F-bombs out there to their players. In fact, the coach is really good. Right. He apologized. He said he was wrong. I understand this was wrong. Um, I'm not proud of my actions. But, you know, in the heat of the moment, he was trying to motivate his players probably the wrong uh, road he took to motivate his players. But my point is, I think it happens a lot. I just think it got caught out there on the internet. And, and it was funny, the, the news broadcasting station in that area had a poll on how many people in that area thought the coach should resign. It was like 79% said no, he should not resign. So. Do you think this might be a public versus private thing? It could be. This was a public school. Yeah, you get to a private school and they have their own rules. They're not governed by, you know, a, a, you know, whatever a school board or you know a superintendent that maybe have rules for or their a state or even. a state that goes over them too. So yeah, I think a private school would have more leniency with their coaches. And I can think of I won't, again. I won't mention names of coaches, but I know some coaches use such language. And uh, I know some coaches that use such language. And of course, and it's it's not something okay. that they talk out in public with. Right. It's within closed doors. Sure. And the players know it. If you talk to the players, they'll say. Yeah, that's coach being coach. Mm -hmm. And the point being, if you don't, especially in that, speaking of the private school terms, you know, you don't have to be there. You don't have to be on this team. If you don't like the way that person coaches your team, you, you can do something else. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, there's other alternatives. Yeah. Bottom line is, it is a different world. Yeah, it is. Watch what you say <laughs> and watch what you do because somebody just might be rolling. Ain't that the truth? And it'll come back to bite you. Well, that's so. unfortunate. It sounded like this guy was doing a good job and everything, right. but he got caught. That's right. That's right. And that's uh, that's a no-no. That's the bottom line. So, all right. Well, thank you so much. Uh, we'll talk to you next week. Of course, district finals will be all over it. Join us next week.